un fait des nuages de la pluie en perspective. I feel like I should explain. I split my time this year between Western Washington University in Bellingham and the University of Washington in Seattle. For my postdoc, for the last three years, I've been here at Western. There were a few reasons to take my NSF fellowship here to Western. Western is a great school, but it's not a place where you normally would take a postdoctoral fellowship. And as evidence of this, last year I was the only postdoc in the entire university as far as I know. The biggest draw to come to Western was my mentor, my research advisor, Kevin Covey. He's been an amazing mentor both for research and also for life and for life balance these last few years. The other big reason was my life. This is where we want to uh, live our lives. So Western is the only other university, large university, within plausible driving distance. So I've had a lot of questions from people asking me what it's like to be a postdoc at a smaller university. And my answer is actually it's really good. This university and the physics department has a big teaching focus and so I have access to a lot of really incredible students. So I know that in lots of these videos I talk about how much my students inspire me and impress me but it really is true and the students here have been really excited to do projects. All right it's a great place to work. I would 10 out of 10 recommend it and now it's time to actually go to my office and get some of that work done. <laughs> So basically we've been doing like a lot of science communication. I've slowly gotten the students that work for me in the fourth season to almost run like a machine. It's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, so that's going well. But we're now presenting this like model of the class we made, which is very modular. Mm -hmm. Modular. It's like one week is we talk about policy, another week we talk about blogs and blogs. Another week we talk about I like press you releases. Say that as if I'm gonna have anything smart to say about it. You're gonna say I'm gonna great say things. I'm gonna say I've been doing this. Yeah. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> yeah. Right. This module, what do I want to say? Format to this class is something that can be really taken to other mm. universities. Um, what, what's the end game? I don't do you, know. Do you want a minor minor in science? Yes. Yeah, so the end game is that it's we want a science communication minor. If not, like focus or something in, yeah. in some of the sciences. We as scientists, you know, we're not mm. taught like basic social science of like how people believe you and like how to how to navigate mm. through different audiences, share an idea like without using jargon from only your yeah. field. We're not taught that. This is the dead cat. This is a dead cat. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. So it would go on your boom mic. There are long boom mic dead cats and what you do is you only use them for when there's mic. Okay, so put it on the mic, mm -hmm. and then... Yeah, and You these, can't hear that. No. Podcasts and videos. We have Vixias and this giant thing over here. This is what's fun about um, my class. It is a camera. It's a baby camera, like so. Pop open. Look at that. Oh, that was a nice sound, too. Are you going to have them vlog? Are they going to do a vlog they have this a, quarter? They have a option to vlog or to podcast. Ooh. They have an option. They got to pick which one. So I am going to come talk to Gina's class about vlogs. And yes. Hopefully, they yeah. will then all vlog. They all, they'll probably all podcast, but, you know, because I podcast. That's fair. I'm doing all this stuff, and we're presenting at conferences, and I'm doing these sessions at conferences, and I feel like if I could just get everyone that's doing sci stuff mm -hmm. on campus together, at least I would know what's happening. At the very most, we could talk more about this whole institute. I want to know more about your end goal. Like, what's your end goal with your blog? Um, I liked blogging. Yeah, your blogs were awesome. Yeah, they were fun. Like, there was a fun thing to do. My, my end goal with this vlog is mm -hmm. much less well-defined. This vlog is in its really early days. Right. Like, I think I've got like 66 subscribers or something like that. It's slow. It's right. small. I'm getting like one or two a week. You know, it's like yeah. that. It's in that small phase. I don't have a really well-defined goal. I, I don't either. I think, <laughs> and one of the things that I'm going to say in your class mm -hmm. is, I think these kinds of projects work the best 
when you have a niche that you want to play to. Yeah. To be honest, I don't like usually communicating about astronomy. Yeah, I don't I'm, either. I'm not very, Oh my god. Oh my I'm god. I'm not yeah. actually passionate about talking about astronomy. So yeah. So some people have been asking me like, why don't you do like mini astronomy lessons or talk about your research? And right. I'm like, cuz I don't want to. I like talking to somebody about their work. Especially science that I don't know anything about. Like when Lena right. Dahlberg came on our show and she does um C. Ellens, I think that's what they're called, the little worms. And oh my gosh, she showed those worms to myself and my nine year old and we're like looking at them. And I never took biology. And I'm looking at these things swarm around and she like, and looking at their brains. I was going insane. I was like, I feel like a scientist. This is <laughs> awesome. The goal now and the theme is not to show my life. It's to show what the job is like. Mm -hmm. It's as... a day in the life of an astronomer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's trying yeah. to demystify some of that. It's trying to um, humanize it. I want to glorify the cool things. Like there are some truly cool things about this gig. Yeah. Having access to these like brilliant students um, and I get to travel some right this job allowed me to go to congressional visit day and yeah. I, I got to meet like a couple senators and that was so fun that's such a cool experience that, that actually changed my life too yeah doing that that um, experience doing the congressional visits put me on the path to actually be an advocate it is an amazing feeling when you realize that you have power yeah I do so much inclusion work and I do so many things where it's like you know people of color this is what happens to them and this is what you know these are the slights we hear, and this is the stereotypes we face. And a lot of my white colleagues are like, oh, like, I'm a terrible person. I was like, no, look at, <laughs> look at what kind of power you have, you right. know? And when I, when I have my colleagues and my friends that be like, I'm going to use this power, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit in a room. And, and it, like, when they, when they have that mindset, like, change all of a sudden, we as people of color or women or uh, women of color and everybody who feels underrepresented, when we start to realize where we aren't, you know, um, underrepresented or where, where we are privileged, like for me, like when I realized I'm privileged as a scientist, and as soon as I, as soon as I finished a PhD in physics, the confidence just was like, mm. I felt like I could do anything. I have all these privileges and I need to like actually use them for good, yeah. you know, like the, the Superman, like with great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. You're basically like Superman. <laughs> I'm basically, well, that's Spider-Man. That was a Spider-Man. Oh. I think. Not a very good comic book fan. <laughs> Writing emails for three hours straight, which I do all the time, is not fun. Yeah. But when you actually have an end result or you have a student being like, this program really helped me or, yeah. or like, you know, I got into this grad school because of you. So everything I do, um, the way I teach, why I teach, why I host this podcast and created it, why I do STEM inclusion and outreach um, and like my job doing that, it's all f for one thing. And that one goal is to dismantle the scientist stereotype. Like that's my one goal. And so whenever somebody asks me to do something, I'm like, is it going to help dismantle the scientist stereotype? Yes, <laughs> then I will do it. Is it not? No. And it, it, it it's taken me five years to crystallize that thought so that it can help me motivate like help motivate me into picking what I'm going to do next how I'm going to do this project this is my goal to get rid of the scientist stereotype stereotype so yeah like that's my goal yeah <laughs> that's good tv right there yeah.